Ro Rethridge is a photographer based in New York. His work fuses conceptual and commercial practices, resulting in a strange and lightly critical version of the world we think we know. His fashion photographs appear frequently in magazines like Vogue China and Dazed, and rest comfortably in collections such as the Whitney Museum, MoMA, and the Art Institute of Chicago. You like to call yourself a photographer who lives and works in New York. Can you elaborate? When I was in art school, in the 90s, there was something about um, not being referred to as a photographer, because mm -hmm. it was sort of like, if you're a photographer, then maybe you're not an artist. Were you an artist, or were you an artist using photography, or were you a photographer? I guess when I started to enjoy those taboos and like refer to things as like, you know, pictorialism is actually pretty cool, you know, like that felt like <laughs> I had, confidence even though it. like it yeah. only is going to be offensive to a small number of people, somehow that calling myself a photographer, you know, working as a commercial photographer and an art photographer and saying that like there's something interesting about pictorialism that sort of all happened at the same time in the late 90s for me. Painters don't have to worry about their, their painting, their real work being taken seriously versus set design or something they're doing usually. That's not right. the case, but there's such a close cl connection in photography between commercial and art gallery. Does it feel uh, schizophrenic to move between those two worlds? Is it pretty fluid? I mean, I wouldn't say that it's fluid because you know there is uh, such a different process you know when mm -hmm. I am making work with the intention of it being for a gallery it's generally with one assistant or by myself or something the production is small you know it's not right. a, a and then mm -hmm. oftentimes even for the smallest you know an eight page editorial mm -hmm. there's 20 people there and catering and you know there, you there's a difference so it's but but I wouldn't say it's schizophrenic and like right. I'd say like that there's definitely uh, voices in the work but also attitudes or modes or ways of being you know the artist mm -hmm. whether that's like selecting the thing or you know, experimenting with an output or doing something like that. So those things are multiple and contained within photography anyway. And sometimes whatever it is that you intend is just an utter failure and you have to like mm -hmm. restart on the spot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the best too, you know, yeah. it's like that thwarted expectations leads to sort of discovery, you know. Let's talk about um, the Goldman Sachs Commission, can you just can you just talk about what you did with that? In 2005, before they started working building their um, headquarters mm -hmm. on West Street, they were commissioning artists, lots of artists, to do stuff for the building. In your case, though, you're taking pictures of the construction of the building. Yeah, and it was like I think it was coming out of the spare bedroom book, which I had done mm -hmm. with Roy McMakin. So it was these like architectural domestic places, but there was also the labor and the interiors. So it was a template that was fairly easy for them to say like, okay, so apply that to this. Wanting documentation of their new building going up? Or it was documentation, but or? it was like, you know, I think the guy that hired me was Timur Galen, and I think he's an art collector, and what he was interested in getting was something unexpected, mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't like just pictures of, you know, geometric shapes. Corporate going, you know. report material or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and so of course like I did lots of corporate report type pictures <laughs> for that thing because I love Ironically, corporate report. Ironically, yeah. I love the kind of headshot thing. I think for me also it was an opportunity to reconcile with the World Trade Center site, which I hadn't, as an artist, you know, I was like, how do I deal with this thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I took pictures of it from my rooftop in Williamsburg mm -hmm. when it was happening, but that was it, you know, I never mm -hmm. kind of dealt with it in a direct way. And then so here I am getting this like Olympian view that's slowly going higher and looking into it while they're cleaning up, while right. they're like setting up, you know, and so like follow this thing over five years. I don't sense a lot of judgment about, you know, sort of New York banking culture or anything like that. I mean, well, I, honestly, when it started, I was like, well, I don't really know what Goldman Sachs is. You know, <laughs> I know it's a bank of some kind that makes like $44 billion a year or something yeah. crazy that can't be good, you know, it must be something <laughs> nefarious going on. But I really didn't understand what it was to begin with because it was so abstract to me. So I understood that there was a lot of power and that there were people, you know, who when they left Goldman Sachs went to positions of power inside politics, mm -hmm. inside culture. You know, in 2008, I felt like the context of this whole thing mm -hmm. 
you know, just I was holding something in my hand and then it just completely changed. The context was shifted entirely. And speaking of that, the, the picture of Hank Balson and Hillary Clinton you took was during that shoot, right? And that was at the groundbreaking ceremony. So and he's like, you know, uber manly with his like jacket open and long tie <laughs> and, you know, right, right. telling Hillary about stuff, you know, and she's like, oh, Man's tell funny. me all about it, Hank. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> so last fall, doing your show in Cincinnati, the Contemporary Arts Center, we had this picture, that picture. As we know, Ohio, the most part was, you know, in Cincinnati, you know, like there was like some ground zero for locker up Right. feelings and expressions so yeah in a way it is a little surprising that it wasn't but I guess to me it, it, it had something in that sort of appropriative mode of like it to, I always wanted like to put copy on it and like Hank and Hillary like <laughs> as if it was like a romantic comedy or something <laughs> like that you know I was like so it was like a yeah. you know culture a misappropriation of like you know somehow misplaced in yeah. uh, the image and that was what the thing that was like giving it that energy each time you you know because it, it doesn't resolve. You have a house in the Rockaway. Mm -hmm. um, does any of this what's going on now remind you of that time? I guess it was like the Wednesday after the storm a day or two after it was like an emotional shock to the point where I just like I didn't feel anything I was in shock for six months and that was just the aftermath you know I didn't live through the swimming down the street you know I mean I wasn't there to see waves lapping up against the front door Res know? rescued by a boat there's a kind of empathy but also like I there's still even in the small way that it was traumatic for me you know, hard not to extrapolate that out and think like, this is going to take a long time. I've heard people in sort of the political spin that happens inevitably trying to say this is a direct cause of global warming, and I think we all think it is, but is there a productive way to worry about? There is a desperate need for me, I think, to maybe to ignore it uh, in the work. Mm -hmm. Although I'm finding the political thing impossible mm -hmm. to ignore, it and swells it, up in just you whatever know it's you're like doing. I feel like the last few shows that I've done have been sort of life stories told in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know whether that's like through family history, work, life, and interest, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know it's sort of happening again with the sh upcoming show, uh, Innocence Two. The motivation is like to hold on to that space, you know, where it's like it's actually, there is some sort of like darkness and light and, you know, like all of that stuff. But then Kellyanne Conway, a screenshot of Kellyanne <laughs> Conway had to go in there. You have to have the shadow to see <laughs> what light looks like, you know, yeah, and like, yeah. so she's there to like, you know, it's like, well, that's not innocence. It's like, no, but it's like, now you know, but see how we innocent know. the rest of it and Now is. we know the devil is a woman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that artists are sometimes are supposed to address, you know, politics head on, and some do, but, but I think though that it's just as legitimate to, to be absorbed in your own thoughts and processes and to know that it's there in some way, that it's, you know, encoded. Some breadcrumbs there, <laughs> the trail. Maybe it's egotistical to think that somebody's going to be like studying oh, totally me did. someday or something. Yeah, yeah. come on. Or reading me. So or... egotistical. <laughs> <laughs> what was my spirit animal again? I forgot. <laughs> I was a peacock, wasn't I? I thought I was a peacock. Oh yeah, I know you were, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was a hedgehog. <laughs> yeah.